you and this meeting is being recorded so you are saying if new string then and the type of this one is not really not really necessary stating the the array there is something that you can just call it anyway I'll, I'll talk about something called scoping today so there's what we call the global scope and the local scope now what the global scope is let's say you define something like outside like this like this let's new string now this whole line that is outside if you define it outside that is not inside the specific function or inside the specific um what's it called inside the specific um if and else statements it's called the global scope that means it's like and what global scope means is you are available to call it anywhere regardless of where you are calling it you can call it outside like this and you can also call it inside of the function do you get that's what the global scope means whenever you define okay. something as a global scope you can call it anywhere you don't have to like pass it in as a as an argument or anything whenever it's outside and not inside of any function but whenever you write something like this let's say you took this new string now and you put it in here inside this function check for string you won't be able to call it outside of this function it's only really going to be relevant inside this function that's what's called a, a local scope do you get so when you define something outside of a function that is like in your normal code that is not inside the particular function we call that a global scope and when you define it inside a particular function that is only working inside of that function, we call it the local scope. Okay. So, so you had saying if type of string array equals equal string. This is where the problem is. Now you are saying string array. String array is is going to be a an array. Yeah, an array. Yeah. Yes. So you are using an array yeah. and you are checking it with a type of string. It is not going to. It is not going to work shake it so if you want to do this part now what you do is you index into it and you write i now you know mm. this one it will run for every for every iteration yes. that you have so when it when yes. it's at one now it will check for yeah. just that then if the type of specialized is a string then it prints it pushes this you get so if you test mm. this part out now it's going to work so you may start with small detail if you call the string array, the string array in its own self, in its own entirety, is going to be a, an array, not a string or not a value that you get. Okay, so um, moving on to the next one. You said square numbers in an array. Okay, this one is required to fit forward. Let me see. So um, for, let's see, numbers two, three, okay, square numbers, and then you pass the numbers, and let's square the code space. Okay, you did a, lo a local scope in here, but it doesn't really matter. So for let's j is zero, j less than numbers length, then squared dot push numbers into j times numbers into j. Okay, this is valid, but a, a way to write um a way to write squared is you do instead of the single asterisk that you do, you do two asterisks and it's two you get so this is a shorthand way of writing a square so whenever you do star star like two asterisks and the and one what you want to raise it to the power of so i can put a three here and it raises it to the power of three i can put a four and it raises it to the power of four so anything that you put after an asterisk asterisk is going to put it it's going to put your previous value to that power you get okay okay so this should work normally uh, so this should work. I'm going to be checking the array though. Yes. So last one is let eight of best to be this and this to be this and new age. So you are just writing. I think I said it's write a function for everything. Okay. Yes, so the function did not I was not able to put it in a function. Okay, okay. Because I was dealing with two arrays, I don't know how to pass two arrays as an argument and still okay. use it. Okay, okay. The thing is, the thing is, it is quite simple actually. You just have to understand the concept of arguments. What an argument okay. generally is, is you can pass anything in as an argument. It can be a string, it can be an array. And you know, I mentioned that an argument doesn't have to be one thing or two things, it can be multiple things. So I can pass in two strings as, as I, I can pass in two, two, a um, what's it called, two arrays as an argument. I can pass in like multiple arrays itself as an argument. So if I wanted to rewrite that code, I could something, I could do something like this. So function age calc equal. Then if you want to pass in the function, you just do date of birth, comma, current age. Right? Yes. 
to this one. You can do this. You can write all of this here to see. Now you do this I less than a bit of bed. Uh, the current is double C. Double R, sorry. Yeah. And I think it's a small C, not capital C. I uh, know, I'm just, you know, like, you also have to understand one thing. Because I'm writing this here. Does not mean what this is is equal to what this is. Yes, this yes that yes. I'm writing here is a place where I can, that, if, if, yes. if that's what I mean, I can write like DOB like this. Okay. And what it is just what I pass in there is going to matter. It does not matter okay. what I write here, so it doesn't really have to match. But I'm just using it to kind of like show an example. Okay. So you should be able to write this comma when I, okay, um, I know you can see this. I want to ask a question on um, Fatima's work. There's a place she wrote J, and J, there's okay. a place she wrote I. So is it that it's not constant? I was thinking that I should be constant. That I okay. don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I get you. Uh, so so I, why is there J? Yeah. So I mentioned it yesterday that it is just that it is just that it is a more generalized way of writing for loop that we use I. Normally, you can use any variable name that you want. You can use anything. You can use A to Z. You can use A to D. You can use anything. Like yesterday, I was using this for so as to not cause confusion. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Network is breaking. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Okay. So what I was saying is, like, it doesn't really matter what um, var um variable name or what uh, letter you use. You get. I just wrote I yesterday because it is a more generalized way of writing for loops. Like it has been like that since the beginning of time, like since people were starting to write for loops. So, so not so that you don't just go <clears throat> into a code base and see like, oh, they're writing for i, and what you're used to is not i. So you can use it more any any variable or any constant thing to to like write your for loop. It doesn't have to be i or, or it does not have to be i um particularly you get. So <clears throat> if I wish okay, now, okay. I can make I can make this like square. <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry. So I can make this square, and all that will matter is just writing square wherever I, I need to write um, my my arrays, like my conditions, rather. So this can be square too. So instead of writing numbers into bracket J, now I can write square. So whatever you define, whatever you call it, is up to you. It doesn't it's not a a constant form like oh it has to be I. No, you can change it. But the more normal way of writing loops is just that, like the people that wrote the code themselves, they always use I. So I has been like the constant way of writing it. So, so as to not cause confusion, it's always good to leave things like that so that you won't cause any confusion. That's why it has been left as I, but you can use any value or any number. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so hopefully that's good. And also, I see less than. So um, I mean that uh, I said. Oh, sorry, Fatima. <clears throat> so Fatima, this is this is you can write like so you can pass in two arguments or two arrays. So you see what I did here was just I just checked for whenever i is also less than this date of birth, and also when it's less than this current age dot length. So you'll be able to like pass in anything that you want to do and it will still work. You get so I'll be making a correction. So that's how you go about it. So nice work. Yeah. I think it also. Uh, let's see who's next. I think this is in the last one. Otola. Okay. Now, whose one is this? I'm not too sure. Let me check. Let me start. This should be. Hola. <clears throat> I think. Yes. Okay. 
So you wrote the full loop and you, you wrote a while loop statement here. Yeah, I don't really get that. Because I don't think this was the question that was given yesterday at all, was it? Are you sure this is like a JS thing you said? Because now we have here, you, you use um, the normal parentheses brackets. I don't know if you are trying to declare an array, but you are trying to declare an array, you use the square brackets to trigger it. So it's a square brackets that you're supposed to use, not the normal curly braces that we have. And also this expression that you wrote, raised to the power, is not valid that way. You cannot write that. This one to Can I write the expression that way you get? Yes, I saw the way you um, described it, the shorthand you showed earlier. Okay. So what you were to do, I probably, you probably did not get the question. So what you were to do was to, like just taking, like to create a for loop that can take in a, I also mentioned this yesterday that the date of birth doesn't have to be date. It actually needs to be the year. So I have to create a for loop that would address that for you didn't. So I'll be making the corrections in class. So please make sure to pay attention. And if you have any questions, please, I would appreciate if you could ask if you get. So I don't none of anything I say would probably work. But let's just move on. I'll make the corrections and hopefully we can learn one or two things from here. Can we hear you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. So, should I increase the font size or this size is fine by you guys? I will not even notice my default font size. I guess it's okay. Nobody has something. So, this X1, let's see who submitted that. I don't know who submitted that. Um, oh, Ismail. Nice. Okay, so get string array. Okay, so um, Ismail, this is your first uh, function. It's a, it's a very, very right. Very, very right. So, uh, nice work, Ismail. So, what you did is a for loop, the normal way that we write it, then you check for the type of in the array. It is equal to a string, so you are putting this array value to it. Nice. So, um, I yeah, consider logging what string array is cool. So, for the square one, let's see. Okay, you also use this, um, this method. Let's see, square array. Then let's this to array dot length. So, square array dot push. Okay, this also works. This also works. I was pushing it directly. I can I evaluate the value. I think what Fatima did was okay. The same thing for actually. So the the next one, the ages. Exactly. So the for the age calculation part, this was what I asked you guys to do. So what this is is like you have to just set the static. You just check the year. Like for you to calculate age, you just put in the age like this here. Then you just subtract it from whatever this is, whatever your 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 date of birth is, and that's what it did here. So it is passing in the the array for date of birth, then which is actually the year of birth. So I didn't really mention the date. So the let it says let B be to be equal to whatever this um value is at that point, and it's subtracting age from it. So whatever that is, is also pushing into the area. I, I think you could sacrifice a little more line. I could probably make this in, in a single line, but it's very, very okay. So this is very, very valid. Ismail, did you test this and it worked? Anybody? Is it before? It is not. No, it's not. Good. Well, nice work. Next one. Okay. 
Mm. <laughs> this is very smart. For the first one, you just put a for loop, made everything a string, and you are printing it out. Although this is not literally going to work, though. This is just a for loop. You took everything in as a string. I said we wanted to check with him. Is it die on the call? I see him in his gym. I don't think he's Jai, are you? Not. But I see him. So what he did was just to talk, like to bring out everything that is here. There's not even considered the login is okay. It's outside. But anyway, it was not. Okay. So for the next one thing, press the I and it does okay. This is actually right. But I don't really think you need to interpret it to print like this. You just print out what the values on the display here. But anyway, this is also this is also right. And for the last one, it says current PM and speed of the I okay, this is also right. But well, it's not pushing it into an array. So nice copy guys. This is pretty simple. So um is that the last one? I think it is from this, from this, from this. As then, is there anybody that has submitted that I have not reviewed the question? This is also not in the core and also a list or at least okay, there's a list. Well, at least you are not doing you're not on the last assignment. No, please, nothing's wrong. Okay. Yeah, but, oh, okay. Um, let's start again. Okay, so I think they're forward now. So, is there a reason why you've not done the uh, last two assignments? And hopefully, other guys too. I won't. I would just say this once because I would emphasize that the best way to learn all of these things is by actually practicing them. So, like, it's very, very important. Normal, this is very, very, very normal to, to look at these concepts while I'm explaining it and say, oh, I understand this. And even not understand, say, if, like, you get like 70%. But if you don't practice, it is going to look a lot, low, a lot more like magic when you're doing it because you feel like, ah, but I understood this concept. So, I think you guys should try as much as possible to practice these things. So that would I be actually attempted it, but okay. I was not just getting the answer, and because and I, you, okay, yeah, yeah, because I also started late. It was just so frustrating. But I had something written down, but it was not just. It was giving me undefined, undefined. So. Uh, you could just um, I, see if even if it is one question that you made and it's not working, okay, I don't have a problem with it. If you submit it, I don't care. I would, I would review it. And if there are places where there are an error, I would, I would even use that to explain. And you we'll probably learn from there. Like, there are a lot of things that just come from people are trying to attempt it. And oh, they get to see a part that oh, I didn't mention this in class. I'll be able to like, figure out what to bring into it. So you can send it to me now if you are like in a position to, and I will just review it to get. And I said mine too. Yes, you giving me all the mind only. So I didn't even bother to send it to you. Or oh, no problem. Even if your if your code is not working, just send it in. So we'll be able to when we start reviewing things, we'll be able to get oh, this is why this is that. So you know, if you don't tell me now, I won't be able to tell you like oh, this is what you did wrong and this is what you could have done better. Like for example, um, Fatima's first code was not run, and it's because she made a simple mistake. So it could be like it's just a very slight mistake that yeah, that something that you're overlooking. That's why something is not is not is not going the way it should. Okay, so you can send the assignments. If you have my uh, my WhatsApp number, is also my Telegram number. So it should be easy if you send it to Telegram directly. Hopefully, I just got that announcement. Yeah, I did. I'm going to send it now. So I need also on Telegram. So you guys should drop it on Telegram. 
So let me try to see the questions and write my own version. For assignment. Okay, so the first question is to address to check for strings. Okay. Let's make a function. Let's check. Let's call this string checker. Let me be more comfortable with writing the more functions now. Okay. So for okay. If type of R bracket I equal to and let's see. What I want to do is I want to push a certain string R dot push um R I so what you just have to do now you just have to find array as strings or make this um Exception eight and nine. Make this true. Make this piece. I'm going to be passing in R again. Call the array we just do find checker so R. <clears throat> so did, do we all get what I did here? So this is just a simple string checkout function. So what the string checkout function does is I wrote a for loop and also an if statement inside the for loop. So the string checker goes like this. So for let i to be zero, the normal conditions that we state if we want to loop over something, I still edit here. But notice that I'm using arrow, which is just for sh the short for i. So it's just arrow dot length. Then I'm getting the arrow as a parameter from here. So I'm checking if the type of the array that I'm getting, like you see that there's an index here. So the array into bracket i is just an index at that particular point, at that particular iteration. So if it is one, if it is zero, you have a if it is one, you get a yeah, if it is um two, you get eighty nine. So I'm checking if that particular value is string. So if that is the case, if it is a string type, the triple this is the strict equality here, which is to check for the type that it is, if the type of is a string. Then it should print out string array of push uh, what's it called to so should push this uh, that value to our array which is string array which is an empty one. So if we have to check this now, we should get what uh, an array what the distance is. Let me consider all of this outside. String checker. So let me link this to you guys have not sent the assignment. Connect my network to my laptop. I don't know. I keep getting logged out. Please, can I send it on WhatsApp? I don't have Telegram on my laptop. Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm.
That's very important. I want to do string array and try it. Very, very important. Okay. So let me just show it. So hopefully we can see this now. I have an array that has this all bolu oe nine trump case as its uh, as its value as the values in the array. So I'm, I wrote a string. I wrote a function rather that takes in that array as an argument. And for every item in that array, it iterates over it and checks if the items, if the type of the array, or if the type of the value that is inside that item is equal to string. If it's a string type, then we are pushing that value into our string array. So when we console log the string array after this whole thing, so we have bolu o e and piece. And if you check our array, we have bolu o e and piece are the only are the only values that we have. So let's say I change this to boolean now instead of string. I say okay, we should push only the boolean. So this should return only true. I will change it to the number like this. So it should return it will return 89 only. So hopefully we all we all got that. Abdullah, please, your voice is kind of low. It's low, very low. It go better now, or if it was low before. Okay, let me see. Oh, that's the number of the Hopefully, you guys can hear me now. Is this, um, yeah. is this fine? Yes, okay. As to the next one, which is the uh. The next one is for the squared, for the squares. So function for the squares is square, let's just name this square. So I'm going to write the for loop also. Um, So um, I also noticed that you guys um, were changing the value for the eyes. I don't know if probably that was why I mean, um, that was why Fatima did that she changed this to G. So I mentioned this thing about global scoping and local scoping. Let's say this I was defined outside of here, outside here, and we used it in, then it could be confusing. But you see anything that we, dis that, that we define inside of a function like this, it's only, it's only applicable inside of that function only. You see this i here, it's only applicable here, do you get? If I console the log i outside, it will be nothing. It will return undefined because we don't really, we don't even have that, that variable. So anything that you define inside of a function is only relevant to that function alone. So even if I define i here again, it's not going to see it's like, it's not going to return something like, oh, you have something, you have a matching variable, you have a variable that you have defined before. So to see it as a separate i, so that's the thing about local scoping. When you, when you, when you write a variable or a constant or anything inside of an array, or I said inside an array, inside a function, that makes it local. And what local means is it's only relevant in that function. It's in itself to get. When you write it outside like this now, probably I write a variable and name it something. So that's a global scope. It means no matter, you can call it anyway, you can call it inside of a function, you can call it outside of that function. So I hope you got what scopes are. So that's probably one of the issues that you guys were running into and you are returning undefined. I'm still waiting your assignments. So charity. So charity, why is your mm, What's it called? Your function on separate lines like that. 
you have four on a separate line, you have if on a separate line. Don't you have any link that helps you align the codes and indent all of those things? Let's try it on the call. Jeez. Yeah, I'm here. Let's get to you. Yes, I said, like, why is your code looking like that? Don't you have, like, any link that helps you arrange how everything looks? That's like, if, if, I press, if, I, if I press enter like this, it goes to, like, two spaces. That's your oh, I, I, I think it comes with every, it should come with every VS code now. Probably should try updating your VS code. Because I think, I don't think I've ever used one that doesn't have kind of like this format that, that would let you indent some things by itself. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll update it and see. She can also install this here. Sorry, I was like, you can also install Prettier as part of your extensions. Prettier. Yeah, that's true. Okay, please, yeah. can you spell like Prettier? Let me type it in the group chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you, because I normally do the indent to myself, so. Ooh, that's serious. I don't know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll try. Okay, so why your stuff will not work? is that your just string is not an array. You have to make it an array. I'm looking at your code now. You have const just string and you're not assigning it to anything. You know, I told you, if you wanted to assign, uh, even if you want to leave a, a variable undefined, use let, not const, shake it. So that's all the reasons. You're trying okay. to push a value to, to something that is not even an array. You cannot do that. So you have to first make just string an array by writing something like this so instead of the string i that i have on my screen here this part you just write const just string equals now open an empty array like the bracket. Okay. exactly okay. i try i also tried that i discovered and did it but yet it's telling me the else i don't know what's wrong with my else and also if you look at the if you look at your if statements yes there's no um there's okay let me see Yes, there's no curly braces after after your if statement. Like your if goes like this, if then this type like this, then this curly braces that should come after you were not putting it there, and that will not run. That's like an error. So you get that's also another error that you could point out. All right. Okay. And also, let's see. So I think if you if you check those things, that should that that should be your function should run that way. Thank you. Let me try. Let me review and Expected booking. Okay. Okay. Number zero minus. Okay. So I know. Um, what you are doing here? You have an array that has these values. Okay. I are trying to push year of birth minus current year. This would not work because one, I don't know if you're in yesterday's class, but you cannot subtract an array from an array. It does not sit like that. That's why we, we make use of the for loop. What the for loop is, is just gets like each each value in each each array and it iterates over that and it prints out something. So probably I should re-explain that part so that we all, we all get it. So now, okay. for this, um, for this part, if you wanted to write it, this is how you go about it. So you, you know what you are doing here is you are changing the year of birth to a number. This will, <clears throat> this will year of birth to a number, and it cannot work like that because the year of birth is an array. So for you to, write, to be able to write that kind of function, what you do is let's just call this the for loop without a function now. For then 
you see let i to be equal to zero do you know the reason why we're doing this one this let i is zero okay, let me ask where in yesterday's class i was in yesterday's class okay okay so um we are doing this because we want to initialize like um our our condition do you get we want to initialize our condition and we want to do um i less than you see here of birth plus length imagine i plus plus now explain this line what this line does is we are setting i to be zero which is just like an initial value and we are setting this um this expression as i less than year of birth dot length so what is the expression how to ask is? is it that this is okay. a formula yes sort of is yeah it's sort of is yeah it is um kind of like a way it's just the like default way of writing for loops because for any for loop you want to be able to get the items in that array that you're checking <clears throat> right so we have this is kind of like a constant it does not really change what changes is probably the name of the array that you'll be passing in here you get <clears throat> So let me just explain the, what it does. So once you understand the concept, you, you know what it means. So we have an initialized, initialized i value here, which is zero, right? And we are checking if i is less than years of year of birth dot length. What this part does is whenever this part here is true, this i less than year of birth dot length is true. Whatever is in this curly braces here runs, like whatever is here. So let's say you have a curly braces now. Let me just put it on the same line for the sake of. So let's say we have a curly braces now. Whenever this part here is true, right? Whenever mi is less than year of birth to its length, whatever we have in this uh, curly braces is, is going to run. It's kind of like having an if statement too. <clears throat> you know, if we write an if and we write in the bracket, we write the condition that we want to be met. Whatever is in the curly braces, if it is true, whatever in the, it is in the curly braces would run, right? So the same thing applies here too. Write four, then we have this um this normal bracket. We set i to be zero. This is like a constant. So we are checking if i is less than year of birth dot length. And you know year of birth dot length would just return a number. It will count the number of things that we have in the year of birth, which is one, two, three, right? So this will be three. So whenever i is less than year of birth dot length, and this is true whatever is in this function would run. So let me try doing console, console.log this runs. Now, whenever this is true, it runs. Now we have this last part here. What this last part does is, you know, we already set i to be zero. So it's just going to be checking for i is, um, if zero is less than your best dot length. And this is also, it's always going to be true because we have an i that has a value so it's only going to check for zero is less less than year of birth dot length so this will run multiple times over and 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 over again but now we now have this last condition which is an incremental what an incremental is it just increases the the value of i by one you now i said it's like if you want to increase the value of i by one you just do i plus plus and it will continue increasing so what this is it's going to be increasing the value of i by one so when when this runs when this run runs like this for zero, and this uh, this whole uh, console dot log logs, it will increase this value of i by one. So it will be zero plus one, so that will be one. So it will check for one again. If one is still less than year of birth dot length, if that is also true, this will run again. And if this finish run running, it will increase the value of i again by one. So this will be two now. It will check for if two is still less than this. If two is less than it, it will run again. So it will increase that number until until this matches this. Like until i matches year of birth dot length. In our case, it's going to be three. Do you get? So until three matches year of birth dot length, that is when this whole thing is going to stop. So that's the whole concept behind the for loop. Do you get? So we are checking for an array. We are checking the the number in that array, right? And we are we are just iterating something over that array, over that array. Our situation means it's just like going over things over and over and over again. 
So now let's see we have that now. So we move on to the next thing. We, are, we have our year of birth. So what we want to do is let's just say we want to calculate. So let's say we just return age to be equals because then let's say the current is 2022 minus year of birth into bracket i now you know in an array right in an array the way we index into an array to get a particular value is writing the square bracket and putting the number the index of that that value that I want to get. So in the index of this is zero, one, two. The index of the first one here is zero. So this will be zero. The index of the second one here is one. So this will be one and this one will be two, right? Now, we, you see that we start our initialization from zero. That means it will start from this last one here. So when I is zero, it will put I here. It will put I here and I is zero. So it's going to get this first number and put it here and to return the value that you get. Now, when, you know, this one will run and if it finishes checking for i is zero, it will increase the value and i will become one. So when i becomes one again, it will put one here. And what is the value for one? It will, it will come here, which is 1992. Then so also it will evaluate this condition. And when i is three, it will come here and it will, um, it will evaluate this, um, this statement that we have here. So hopefully this is, um, this is like explanatory enough. Yes, I'm thank you. Okay. So please, yeah, I want to ask question. you something. Okay, yeah. In that return age is when you do 2022 minus 1992, is the answer going to appear on the console? No, this will not appear on the console unless I write console. Okay. Then age. You see, there's this thing that we, we have to understand about um, what's called returning a statement. If we return something, it's not going to appear in the console. It's only if the console dot log something that it's going to appear. So let me say I'm console dot log in. Yes. So let's say I define this as age is equal to this. Then I come to the next line and I say console dot log age, right? So whenever I check my console, it's going to we are going to have this age value there. But when you return something, it's just kind of like storing that storing that value. Because normally the way we would use JavaScript is we store the value and we pass it to the HTML pass that we need it. So that's why the return statement is very important. We don't, we don't like you can't expect me to be on the on the browser now and I'm probably doing a calculation on on your website and you ask me to go to the console to check what the um, what the answer of my calculation is. It's only in development when you are trying to test things out that we really use this console.log. Normally it's the return statement that is the most used. Because what it does is it will return whatever the evaluation they are, they are trying to make it to return the value and to store it. So it's that stored value that I'm going to be using in our HTML to, to display, do you get? Okay, so. All right, nice. So, um, and this is the way you do, you probably do it. And if you want to push this, uh, what's it called? If you want to push the value of, of age, you just do total dot push then age. So this would this would add this um age value into our array, so we don't have any problems here. Mm -hmm. Hello. Anyways, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I can so, hear what, so what happens if you don't put a return? If you don't put a return like this, I don't get you. Yes, like if you have that loop without the return, what would happen? You won't see anything in your console. Nothing will be in your console. What the return value does is it just stores whatever the evaluation is in a particular constant. You no, know, when I did it, I said return, right? Then I put age here. Then whatever this evaluation is, it will store it in age, but we will not see it. We will not see it anywhere. Do you get? You not see it in our console. You may even see it in our browser yet because we are not using it. But if we want to, if we want to like see it in our console, we have to put console the logs so that will be able to see it. To get, if we want to also use it in our browser, it is going to be very easy for us to access in our browser. 
But when we, when we get to implementing HTML and CSS and JavaScript together, we would, we would explore more on what the return statement does. And just as a quick side and note. Instead of the return statement, mm -hmm. I would use a total.push. Is that what yeah, you're you saying? Just use yeah, you just use total dot push. If I want to calculate for the other value in the current year, I'll just do it like you have done it here, right? Uh, if you want to, if you want to calculate for what I asked yesterday was just to, you can mm -hmm. just take a like this current year that we are in, which is twenty twenty two, then you subtract the year of birth from it. You don't really have to define of this array like this. Okay. 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 All right. Um. So let's see. So a quick side note before I forget. Whenever you write the return statement, right? Whenever you write the return statement like this, nothing after this after this single line that we have here, nothing would run. Do you get? Like whenever you write a return, and you're not putting it in curly braces or anything, nothing will run. Like you see, for example, now when when I highlight over this, it said unreachable code detected. That's because after the return statement, nothing works. So after return, now if I console dot log h the log each it will not work you see that it has it grayed out here so anything after the return statement does not work unless there's an exception so you probably be asking what if we have multiple lines of things that we want to do that's what the curly braces is for so let's say we have a curly braces now it's not even curly braces here it's the normal braces So let me just take it back. So when we when you start to explore this, actually, you see. So nothing works after the return statement. No matter what you write, it will not see it. You get so after the return statement, everything stops. Everything stops evaluation. You get. Um. Let's see. Let me go back to what I was saying. Okay, so for we are trying to check for the square, the square value, square array. So the square array is quite. Um, no, sir, please, I have a question from this one. Yeah. Why did you use the console.log string array twice? I noticed that from my system, the first one is not showing any value. Okay, I don't know where you are writing it. But you see now that in this part here, we have this whole for loop thing, right? Then after that evaluates, we want to be able to see what our string, our string array is like, what the new array is. That's why I wrote it here. If you check our console, it's going to appear twice. Let's see. It appears twice because there's one here at line 11 outside of yes. the for loop. So you see that here. And there's another one immediately after I call the function to get. So you, I think if you call this before the function, it should return an empty array. Should, you see, yeah. So if you call it before before you call the function, you know, it's whenever you call the function that the value runs to get. So I think what you are doing is you are calling, I mean, you are considering logging what the string array is before you call the function. The function, um, this only works like this whole evaluation only happens after you call the function, like after the function is working. So if I put this up top now, the function up top, and I put the console.log below, we have our value here as Bolu OEM piece. But if like I called this before, I called the array before I called the function, we we'll, we'll have an empty array like this. So that's what you mean. Do you get so um you should try if you try that you should, you should see like okay. if, if you call. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So what we are just doing here is we just want to. Um, I'm going to be pushing this to the string array actually. So string array dot push then nums bracket i. So what I'm doing here is just to square. Two, three, 
So what I'm doing here is I'm just pushing the values that we are, that we'll be getting. You know, I already explained how this whole for loop works. Then the for loop, you have this. We are checking for i to be less than the norms dot length. Then whenever we have the norms into bracket i for each number, we just want to square it. So that's literally what this is. But you can see I'm just using the string array that we had before. So after bolu o e and p c to just add whatever value we have in this uh, in this function to add it to it. So if we check our console now, we should have. So, you see, for the for, let me just remove this one here. So, we don't have any confusion. So, you see, after the Bolo IMPC, just adds the square of the, of the numbers that we passed in, which is 2, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36, respectively. Since my own array is, it has just 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, it squares them and it returns it, and I join it to the string array that we had before. So, we have 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36, respectively. So for the last question, which is just to calculate the year of birth, to calculate age. So we can just write a function that says age calc like this. Then that age is write a for loop. You would be. Yeah, okay. Okay. So let's do your so what i did here was just i'm just pushing the values of you know i defined a, a an array called the year of death array and i put different values in there so what i'm doing here is just to subtract the year of birth that i'm getting from each each value of the array from 2022 which is the current year to get the the person's age. So if we check our console now, we should be seeing, we won't see any of that yet. Let's bring this all the way down and call the age calculation. Put in why we need. So you can see now that after the 36 that we have here, it's calculating the year of birth and it's calculating the age of the person. So 2022 minus 2001 will give us 21, then minus 2000 will give us 22, then minus 1990 will give us 32, and minus, 90, minus 1898 will give us 124 years. So that's literally all I asked us to do yesterday, and hopefully we all got this. I even want us to move to something else before today's class ends. So do we all get this? If you have any questions, let's ask before I move on, please. So any questions before I move on? Okay, try to go ahead. I wanted to ask a question, Charity. I should move on. Please move on. I was talking to you. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. If I have prepared, it's possibly. Okay. Yesterday, I wanted to mention before each, uh, what's it called? Before each. Let me just call it bring it here.
Okay. So I'm going to be mentioning a little bit about what a foolish statement is. <clears throat> so literally, yes, we are writing all of this for loop, for loop, and it's interesting what it is. But you know, this is kind of like old way of writing JavaScript. Like the the language has been so like more mesmerized, has been like updated enough to like be able to get. Mm, how do I put this? So you know, like there's always advancement as things go by. They are like little updates that come to your mobile apps. The same thing applies to languages too. JavaScript, we used to use the for loop in the olden days, probably in 2015, the ES 15 JavaScript. But now it comes with a more easy way to write loops, like to loop over an array. You have different ways to loop over, over an array. You can have the map, you have the, the filter, you have the for each. So this for each one is a very, very interesting one. So what it does here, you know, <clears throat> like in the for loop, we are checking for a, that <clears throat> we check for i when it's less than non length, you want to do something, something. This simplifies that. Yes, it simplifies that in the sense that, let's say you have a, a, an array called those like we had yesterday. You just write, uh, how do I put this? I probably have to write in notes. I'm writing notes. Okay, I'm just write a short note. So the for each looping, okay, let us call it method on an array is a way of looping over items in an array without writing the for loop statement. So the for each method is a way of just, is a, is a method that is on an array. So in, a method is kind of like just a specific or a, a, a special function that you call on a particular array. So it's a method on an array, which is a way of looping over items in an array without using the loop method, the, the, the for loop. You know, normally you want to write our, like you want to loop over an array, you want to get the items inside of an array, you write the for loop to get each, each item at a time. So the for each, it simplifies this for us. What it does is it takes a callback function. So I'm going to explain what that means in a bit. So let me just point that out and go to the next one. And so let's say we have a, a, a names array, for example, because it's a so let's say we have this now and we want to get each value for guys inside of this array maybe the normal way that we we'll do that is writing a for loop so the for each statement it simplifies that for us like just you can just do like a name dot for each now you know if you want to call a method and if you want to call a method on an object where you want to get a value inside of an object, you use this dot notation. So this uh, this for each statement, you call it on an array by using the dot for each statement, like you use the syntax dot and write the for each. So from here, you can see that what the for each takes is, it performs the specified action for each element in an array. So let's say you have an array now, right? And you want to like do something over each element that you have in an array. The name is pretty. Straightforward. What it, what it does is for each element, instead for each, what you do is you write a function Now this is going to be very, it will look very, very funny. Like now, I wrote for each statement, yes, and I put a bracket. Let me just go back a bit. Now, this is the names dot for each. This is how you would write this, actually. You want to write it without anything. Write names, which is the name of our array, dot for each. So what this does is it takes a function in, 
like we read before. Side of this bracket that we have it, that's all it is. What you I'm sorry, your right? voice is I breaking. Said, I don't know if I'm communicating this. Your voice is breaking. Yes. Okay. I said what the for each statement is. You know, normally if you want to get each each item inside of an array, we write the for loop, right? Right, you have to write the whole for loop of clinical clinical let i is equal to this and that. But the for each gives us a more simplified version, a more simplified way of doing that, like a very simple way of doing that. So what it is is <clears throat> whenever you want to like loop over an array, you want to get items inside of an array, you write the name of the array first. Then you write this dot, like the normal full stop. Then you write for each like this, F for R, then E A C H E with the capital letter. Then you write the normal bracket. of another function now this for each statement itself it's a function that javascript gives us Your line gives us the ability it. my line bro it broke again yes but can you hear me now yeah i can hear you now okay so i said what the callback function is is a function that you call inside of another function that's what the function, a callback function is. Let's say I have a function now. I created the function, right? And now I have another function that I am calling inside the, the created function that I have. That is a callback function. So let's say I have, let's, what function do I have here? Okay. Let's say I have this function string checker now. You see, this is a function on its own. And I take this uh, square function and I put it inside like this. This square function that is here now is a callback function to this uh, to this bigger um, to this out external function that I have here. So a function that is inside of a function is the callback function. So you get so that's just what the callback function is. It sounds very very uh, it sounds like a very distant uh, something to relate to, but it's really not. So what the callback function is is just a function that you put inside of another function. That's a callback function. So what this for each, uh, whatever it is, is also a function that JavaScript has given to us like, okay, this is a function that you can use to loop over, to loop over a, a specific array. You know, instead of us writing all of these four statements, this uh, for clinical is equal to something, JavaScript compiled all of that, all of these four statements that would have written initially, and it, it compiled it and changed it, and changed it to this for each statement. So you just compressed everything and put it in one thing. So we won't have to be like writing the four state the four loops ourselves. So because the four loops can get very funny when you're trying to undo like a very large amount of data, it's going to be very, very tedious to do. So that's why JavaScript compiled everything and compressed it into this for each statement, right? So what the for each statement does is it takes in another function as an argument and what that function is is a callback function that's what they call it so you know if you wanted to write callback uh, if you want to write a function you say function then this then you do like this right uh, this is how we write a function naturally and if you wanted to write an arrow function we do const uh, let's say nums for example equals An arrow function is like this, you write equal to then this whole parenthesis with the arrow and the, the curly braces, that's how you write it. But naturally, all callback, all callback, almost all callback functions are nameless. What do we mean? You know this function that we want to do now, like that we want to write inside of this, inside of this for each statement, it really does not matter what it does. We can just define a function without a name. So that's literally what the call function, the callback function would be, a function without a name. And how do we write that? If we were to write it with the normal function statements that we had before, that's write function, then something, something like the name of the function, then this, then we have to do the curly braces, right? So 
what if you want to write the nameless function of this one, it's going to be very, very hard because you have to state the name, then just has this uh, this normal parenthesis and the curly basis. But for a callback function, we need to use this arrow function uh, functionality. It's the only thing that works with it, actually. So you copy this one that we have here, this whole um, parenthesis with the arrow thing, you put that here, control V. Oh, control Z. I've not copied it, I just thought I did. So you copy this one here, control C, then you put it here, right? Then you put in the curly braces and that's all. So that's how you write a callback function, a nameless callback function to be precise. Whenever you want to write a nameless callback function, you just put this normal curly braces that we have, you put it there, then the arrow function, then the curly braces that will have normally followed uh, any function that you wrote. So that's all, that's all it does actually. So it's very, very easy to use the for each statement, but let me let me show it in action so that you guys can see. So in this console, the log name. Can anyone ever hear me? Hello, can you all hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you now. Hello. We can hear you now. Okay, okay, cool. So um, what I was explaining is, you know this uh, for each function, right? This for each uh, function that we have, we write the callback function inside of it, which is this empty break. Let me just write it out again. I only want to one last time. That's why I go back to this thing. So let's say I have names dot for each, right? Then you write the normal curly basis and the normal brackets that we write to call the function. Then you do this curly basis, then the arrow sign, then write the curly basis. So you, you write this first, this normal curly and this normal brackets that we, we would write normally. Then the arrow, which is just an equal to sign followed by a greater than sign, then the curly basis to call the function, right? Now let's see. So what this does is we have to pass an argument inside of this function, the callback function that we wrote. And what the argument is, is just like a placeholder. So what this would do is let's say I'm, I'm calling names out for each, right? So what this will do is you just go to our names and to take everything that is here, you take it one by one. And for us to be able to like get what the, uh, the values are, we have to pass in an argument here. Knowing the for the for loop normally to pass in an, an, an argument to the function that we are writing. You see this one now we are passing in the norms argument. This one we are passing in the year of bet. The same thing applies to this one. We just pass in a placeholder for the callback function. So we write something like name. All right. So let's say we are passing in this uh, this placeholder of name as an argument. Then for every, every anything that you want to do in the function like anything that you want to do over over this whole uh over this whole array that we have you just do it in this function here so let's just say i want to do console.log of name now so what this will do is it will check this array this names array right for every every item that is inside it will get the the items so it will put um tifa here it will put here, then it will console.log that out. It will take magic, put it here too, console.log that out, take prosper, put it here, console.log that out, and take the blessing also and put it out. So let's, if you check our console now, it says norms has already been declared. Okay, let's change this. This is this one that just giving us issues. So you can see now that we have Tifa, the magic, then prosper, then blessing, each printed separate times. So that's what the for each function does. It will take a, a nameless um, function like this, which is just this uh, curly braces, then the arrow, then this curly braces that we have, right? It will take the normal braces, then followed by the arrow, then the curly braces. Now we have to pass in an argument. The argument is just any place so that I can name it anything. I can name this, I can name this name N or something. 
and I'll just have to replace this with n and it will still work. Do you get? So the argument is going to be anything. So any action that we want to perform on uh, on the on or like on uh, every item that is on here, that's what that's just what we are going to write in here. So let's say I want to do this is let's say this is a number now twenty four. This is twenty five. This is twenty. Let's make this nineteen. And let's make this one hundred. So I want to console dot log n plus one hundred now. Now you see what I'm doing here is okay. I changed the values that's inside this names array to numbers, right? So what this will do is it will check for each names, like for each each value that we have. So this is going to be n at this point. It will check that add hundred and it would return that value. So it is going to take the next one, do the same evaluation and add 100. Take the next one, do the same evaluation and add 100. We won't have to be writing the, the statements ourselves, do you get? So that's basically what the for each statement does. Instead of the whole complication with the for loop that we have to write everything ourselves, uh, and let's I be less than numbers or length and everything like that. This takes our problem and it solves it for us. So what this will do is the for each statement we just take a function that we're going to write like the normal brackets, the arrow, then the curly braces. So whatever evaluation that we want to put, like that we want to do, you know, after we write our four statements like this, we have to write uh, what we want to evaluate inside of inside of the for loop. That's exactly what we'll be doing here. So whatever we want to evaluate, we'll just be doing it inside of that curly braces that we have, and it will still return the same thing. So if you check our console now, the first one will be 124. Followed by 125, followed by 190, and followed by 200. It added 100 to the values that we had in this uh, array. So that's all the for each statement does. It takes our complication and just helps us solve it. So instead of us writing the for loop and racking our brain to write all of that, we have this simple method of just writing a, a, a loop, but in a very simple and more efficient way. Do you understand this? Or I should go over the concept one more time. I want to be writing like two more examples. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to write two more examples before I give them like a short clip. So I'm going to make one of these as an example. So I'm going to be using this square, what's it called? This square function. So let's say I wanted to do, okay, so it is norms that we have as the square, all right? So I'll do numbers. Hopefully you understand why I'm doing this. So the array that, we, that has the numbers that we are squaring here is norms. That's why I renamed this to be norms, right? And I said dot for each. Then that means every uh, every value that's inside this norms array is going to be evaluated like this. Then we write this function, right? We're passing the argument, any argument can be anything. Then we write whatever you want to write here. So. Let's say we wanted to push this value like, like we did here now, this one. Let me see. Or let me just make a new array actually. So it won't, um, it won't confuse us. Let's just make this for each array. So we are making this for each array. So for every value that we get, what we just want to do is for each dot push right just push in star star two so what we are doing here is you know the normal way of writing this is we have to write this whole for let i to be equal to kinecon then i is less than norms dot length then i plus plus and we have to do this string array dot push so all of that complication just makes it easy all you have to do is just define the names of um, define your array so for that array, you just write dot for each. You write the nameless function, you pass in the argument, and you take whatever evaluation that you want to do, you take it on that argument, and it will return that value for you. So if you check our, you see, oh, where's this? Oh, I'm not console logging it yet. So let me console.log. So I'm going to the login for each now. So we can see that we have here four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, and thirty-six, like we had before. 
So that's just the simple way of writing the for each statement. It's a very, very, very simple way of looping over an array. So let's say I want to do the same thing for these names too now. I'll just replace this with names. And we have the square of these values inside of our for each array. So instead of that, we have 576, 625, 8,100, and this uh, 10,000. So it's a very easy way of writing the, the for loop, but in a much more simpler, simpler way. So Ezra, hopefully this this um settled what you wanted us to cover about the for each statement. Um uh, yeah, it does, but I'm still it's still a bit confusing. Not, yeah. Hey, don't worry. If, I don't know why you, you guys can ask questions. See, if I have to go over it a thousand times, I will. I don't have a problem with that. She gets if it's confusing, just tell me straight up. Oh, this is confusing. I'll ask you which part. If it's everything, I'll just re-explain. If nothing else, I'll so let me just take it one by one, right? If you want to write a for each statement, what we do is the name of the array that you want to call the for each statement on. You now here we have a lot of array. We can call it on this ARR here that we have. Okay, let's use the ARR that we have. So I want to call the for each statement on the ARR. I'll write the ARR first, right? Then immediately after, I'll write this dot. Then on the dot, you can see like my own VS Code it suggests the kind of things that we can do on the array. So we have, since it's an array, it gives me all of these methods that the array has. We have the map, you have the pop, the push, the reduce. So also there's the for each two. See, whenever I, when I try to type it out, you see, it brings it out, there's the for each method two. Okay, right for each, right? This is the for each. Then you put this normal brackets just to call the function. Because this for each function, Function that JavaScript has created for us. So, and in that function, they just like put all of the for loop that we would normally write. They just put it in that function and give it to us that like, okay, guys, if you want to, if you want to call a loop over an array, you don't have to write the for loop yourself again. We have given you this for each um function. You just use it directly, and you'll be able to call things over your array. So, but what it does give us as a new uh, way of doing it, you know, in our array now we can define the. Sorry, in our for loop now, we have to define the function ourselves, right? For it something to work, we want something, uh, if you want something to work, you have to define the function. Okay, fine. So that's what they just did here. They gave us the function and they wrote the for loop inside of that function. So we don't have to bother about writing a for loop again. So, but the way they allowed us to use it is, now we have this whole space here, this whole uh, normal brackets here. You call a function inside of this function, Instead of this for each function, you just call this function like this. Instead of writing a function, the name, putting the bracket and and writing the curly braces, you just write this like this. It's a nameless function. That's how they call it. You just write this normal curly braces, right? This normal brackets rather. Then you put the equal to sign in front. They change it into an arrow. Like, you know, this is how we would normally write an arrow function. You put this bracket, then the arrow, then followed by the curly braces, and that's all you need, right? So it's now inside of this curly braces that you write whatever value you want to evaluate, like you write whatever you want to evaluate. So let's say, like for this for this example now, we are, we are passing in an argument. So the argument is what you want to evaluate. What this argument would be, let me, let me console the log so that you guys can see. So if you go back to our log and check what this argument n is, you will see that it is just the numbers that we are getting from here. It's just the separate values, each each value that we are getting from this names array that is going to be in your argument. So let's go to our console and see. You see we have 24, 25, 90, and 100. So it's just a way of telling you that, okay, what we want to perform the action on is the values that is inside this array. Okay, Ezra, speak please. Yeah, so um, for with this for each, right? Unlike the for loop mm -hmm. that it looks at the index and then um, checks if it is less than, if we want to, if we yes. want to place a condition like that for the for each, how are we going to, how are we going to go about that? Like if we don't want, it, if we don't want to, um, if we don't want it, to, if we don't, if we want to like multiply a number, if it is, if it is less than maybe something within, um, within the given array, or if you want to okay. add to it or something like that. Okay. To Let's a particular, see, okay, have, maybe within a range. 
Okay, like the the first statement that the first one of the first questions that we solved that we have uh, something greater than or equal to fifty. I'm in that range, right? Yes. They want to they want to apply something to that. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Before each since it is like this part here is, is a function, you can write anything that you want that you normally run in any other function in it. You can write an if statement inside inside that place. She gets. Now, if I, let, let's say now we have this this whole argument thing. I was just explaining this argument that what this argument that we are passing in so that it won't look like magic. What the argument generally is, is after the for each analysis all of the array, this argument is just going to be the single, the, each each value for that is inside the array. So if you check the console now, you see I'm logging out this um, arguments that I that I've written. If I check that, you see it's 24, 25, 90, and 100. So let's say I change this to the ARR that we had before. That's the one with names and other values. Let's change this to wait, ARR. So what this argument would be is just the values inside of that array, which is the BOLU, OE, 89, true, and peace. Sure you get. So this, this um, whole argument thing is just like the values that is inside the array. Now you now ask a question like if you want to do a, a, a certain a certain kind of uh, evaluation. So let's say I pass in. So let's say I pass in an argument now, right? That's n. So in this um, function part, you can just write whatever that we would write normally. So if I wanted to write an if statement, I can just write if then I'll greater than twenty five. Then we want to pass, we want to do a certain function. Let's say we want to multiply n times two. Let's say also the log n times two. Else return else also the log number is less than 25. So we can do this here. So you see now that we want to do if a particular value is greater than something or we want to make any evaluation, you, you can make any evaluation that you make in a normal function inside of this kind of function too. So let's say I want to check that, okay, for numbers greater than 25, that's the numbers I wanted to multiply, that I want to multiply by two, right? It will still work. Space this console. Now you see we have two numbers that is less than 25. That's what it shows us here. So if you check it, how many numbers are less than 25? You have oh where is, where is it? Numbers number is less than 25. Which of the arrays are we calling? Okay. So we have 24, we have 25, we have 90, we have 100. It should be once that this logs it says twice. Well, it runs twice actually. I will console the login it twice. I think so. Let's see. This. Oh, okay. Imagine. I was checking for a different one actually. So this is what we are calling the function on, which is ARR, right? Now, if you go to ARR, ARR, we have that one. It's nice it's the only value that we have here. And it's nice greater than 25. So it multiply, should multiply that by two. Else, if you consider the log number is less than 25. So it multiplies 89, it squares it. We have 7,921, and it prints out number is less than 25, which is true because we have how many numbers less than 25? It sees this as a number. This bolu, this is one, two. You can see that it prints out the first two, one, two, number is less than 25 for this value, bolu and oe, which are no numbers actually, but you get the gist. It will evaluate anything that you want. So for the first two, it prints out that number is less than 25, right? Then it evaluates 89. Then we can see it here that it multiplies 89 by two. And for the last two, you see true and peace. It evaluates for the last two, two. Since it does not satisfy our condition, it evaluates for the last two, two. So you can write any condition that you want inside of that um, callback function. Like you, you would any other, any other function so you get. Hopefully I answered the question. And if I did not, I can come back and you can ask again. Thank you. I think I'll just have to do more reading or research for me. Well, I'll reach out to you later. I think that'll be better. Okay. Yeah, no problem.
So I, I, I want to give out like a small exercise on this for each statement. So we will all write it for each statement. It's going to be something very simple. We should be able to do it. If you have any questions, you can ask me, even if even though it's regards to class quiz, I don't mind that I, I can always answer. So I'll give out a small uh, a small class quiz now. I'll send it on the group. So hopefully we all attend attempt it rather. Let's see. Um what can we give you? Please, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. You see the first assignment, the one that um print out if it's an array. Okay, this one, this one up top. This can you one. hear me? Yes, yeah. I can hear you on this one. Yeah, I'm trying to use a for um for each statement to do it. And um, it's not exactly giving me the results I want. I want to be able to tell it like I want this index. Let me let's yeah, of course, share your screen. So let's see what you're Okay, about. wait. Um let me let me connect to my laptop. Because I'm using my phone. So let me connect to my laptop. No problem. So let me just send the assessment. Okay. Yeah, please, please slow down. Let, let me screenshot the um the other one. It's for for each. Okay. Is it fine this way? Or I should go up more? Yeah, it's fine. Please make at least PC co-host. I've made you go so you can share some. Okay, thank you. This part. Okay. Yeah, so how do I like, how do I like make it, like give it an index so that it tells me, okay, so let me show you my, this is my array. I made it a mixture. I made it I a mixture. You. Yeah. So, um, school of, <laughs> uh, uh, let me just mention one thing here. When, it, before, before each, uh, what's it called? Before each function, or before each method, what it does is literally what the for loop would do. You don't have to st specify, oh, this is the for loop. You are right, and that for loop, you'll, a whole other for loop inside of your array. Inside of your for each function, you get scroll down. Okay. So the way you would have done it here is delete, delete this, uh, this, the old line, the, okay. Everything. Leave this one, leave, leave the, no, no, leave the if statement. Now, instead of putting type of array into bracket I, you don't need that again. You just put array, type of array alone. Delete all of the brackets and bracket things. Just delete it and put type of array. You get line 53. You have type of then into brackets, then array into brackets I. So you remove that whole array into bracket I and just put array simple. Like this, right? Sorry, I've moved it, but my is Your screen has frozen. I cannot, it is not moving. I'm not seeing any changes. Okay, I'm coming. Network. Okay. Let me try reconnecting. No problem. 
Let me try to send something to the group with the assessment. Assistant should be able to Please make me co-host again. Make me co-host. You are co-host now. Yeah, so you should have you should have this now. It should work now. What do you want to consider log now? I don't get you. What are you doing? Are you trying to get the index? And we can't hear you. You're on mute, maybe, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I've been talking all this while. <laughs> I'm saying that I want to get like an individual index. Okay. I think you've not yet understood the concept of the for each. The for each will okay. literally evaluate everything inside of the eye. So we oh. cannot get the yeah, so you cannot get a particular index because it will evaluate everything for you. So it will reiterate oh. over everything that you have in the array that you get. Yes. You oh, I thought you did. Now. Yes, so I've seen it that. Out, it's a string two times. The first value that you have is a number. It says it's not a string. Then it prints out string two times. And that's the time. The last one. Okay. So what the Sorry. voice does is okay, I'm listening. No, please go ahead. I'll ask you. Yes, okay. So what the voice does is it just retreats over everything that you have inside of your array to get. It's not yes. for um uh -huh. so if you want to perform an action, you probably have to set an if check should you get. So let's say you want to get a particular string now, you can just set an if check that okay. If uh if the array matches this type of string. Let's say you want to check for hey now. So if array matches hey, then you can console out what you want to console out. You get. But what yes. the for each would do is it would check for every item inside that array, and it would ever it would call the callback function that function that you have created. It will always call it on each 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 array to get. Yeah. So let's say you have um you have an array of numbers now, right? So, and in that array of numbers, you call the for each on it, and in the function, the callback function that is inside the for each, you say you want to divide each number by two. You want to also develop the division of each each array number by two. It will, it will evaluate that um, function over the number of elements that is inside the array. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. I'm sorry, does it for, for loop work like exactly the same way? Yes, the for loop works exactly the same way too. The, the whole abstraction is just that they remove the for loop because it's kind of like bulky when you have to do with a lot of data. So they remove yeah. that abstraction and just put it in this for each statement. So it is exactly what the for loop would do, but to make your clean uh, your code cleaner, you have to write all of that for and the function. All you just have to do is what you want to evaluate whenever you get the values. That's what you have to write in the function, and that's all. Okay, sure. I think that's what I got wrong. Yeah. So Thanks. hopefully we all understood that. 
I want to try to drop a quiz and let me see if I have any here. Mm. Can we also use the push function for this? Um, yes, for this no, you, can, you see, yes, you see anything that you could write normally in any function, you can also write it in the for each. Like, you know, we are writing an, uh, a function now that, are, that, is not, that does not have any name. Just put the normal brackets, then the arrow, which is equal to and the greater than sign, then the call basis. So anything that you would write inside a normal function, you can write it there. You can write a new statement. You can write anything you get. You can write anything inside. Sorry, did you get me? Yes, yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. So I want to drop a quiz that would do. Okay, I, I I have one now. This is very very simple. You should be able to do it in like five minutes. So I'm dropping it on the group now. Let me drop the couple more. So I'll solve them together. Now, um, so I dropped a particular question on the group, and now, like for the the last, so the, this previous assignment that I gave you that you guys submitted today. So you are going to change, you convert all of, uh, you convert all those functions, all those for loops into a for each statement. Hopefully, we got that. Everybody. They already get that you are converting what we have into. We have twenty minutes. So all we have is just twenty minutes. We are converting what we what we did in the assignment into a for each statement. Let's go. It was the one that I added on the. Are we doing it now? Yes, now. Okay. It's very easy now. You guys have done the for each statement. You just have to find a way to do the for each. Very easy. Should be done in like 10 minutes because we're ending. Sorry, is it the ones you gave um, yesterday or including the other ones? Yeah, the ones that, yeah, the ones that I gave yesterday for the for loop. So we are going to convert it into a for each statement. So you already have the evaluation grade. You just have to convert it into a for each statement. So what about the one you just posted in the group chat? What is that one for? Okay. We are doing it too. We are doing it to under 15 minutes. Yes, we are doing it. The first, the first three that the first three we had yesterday, you guys have you have already like done is written everything that you need to. You just have to convert it into a for each statement, and if you can convert one, you can con definitely convert the rest. So it's very easy. Plus the step, the one I just sent to the group now is like just simple thing. They are just pointing out something, so nothing much.
We have aluminums like fitting, you know, moving by much. I have like four or five minutes left. Let's see, like six. So, long fifteen, like long twenty five. Okay. Uh, I don't, it's giving, it's giving me this meeting is answer. being recorded. I'm not sure if this is what you want us to do. I just interpreted it in my own way. I'm not sure if this is what you want us to do. Uh, just share your screen and let's see. You're on your PC, right? Just share your screen. Because we have those like four minutes more now. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, I can. Can you see? Yeah, I can. I can. Hello? I can see. I can see it. Can you? And, yes, and this is the answer. Okay, that's not what I asked. <laughs> it's giving me plus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I get, I get why it's doing that. I get why it's doing that. You guys like templates literally a lot. And I said it time, 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 time again. Whenever, <laughs> whenever you use template literals. The question requires template literals. Okay, I'll, I'll do it now and I'll, I'll see. But let me just make the correct See what you said. Okay. Let's see. Let me share. Stop sharing so I can share. So you can all see this now. Let me just convert the first two into templates and into. Interesting. Now I just have. Okay, they're doing carry, right? For each. I'm going to call this function. So this is for the first one, pretty straightforward. So I'm doing an array, which is AR dot for each, right? Let's come to this one. So an AR dot for each, which is the array value that I had before this one, AR here. Then the for each, then I'm passing in an argument and I'm checking if that type of argument is string. If it is a string, we're pushing it to to uh, what's it called? To the string array. So if console.log string array now, we should be able to see, we should be able to see what we have now. We have bolu OEM piece. 
Let, let, but let me make it a separate array so that it sounds. So let's make this to be for each. So can you make it in a function type so that because that's how the former one was in the function, or is it not possible to have for each in the function? Yes, yes, it's possible actually. Let's just take this here. So that's function to string this to get to z. ARR so this is pretty straightforward actually so what i did is i created this function called string right and i passed in an argument so that argument is going to be this array that we have here so it's going to get passed down so that is what is going to be used here so that array dot for each let me just make this ar so that's not confusing so this is a different this is a different argument. So this array that we are passing down is what is here. So you we'll call for each on that. Then an argument, we are checking if the type of a string, they want to push it to for each. So if I console log for each now, log for Sorry, each. sorry, sorry, please. Please, can you wait? Okay, I'm just watching. Please, you said time, the actually. array, no. I'm so sorry for pushing. I'm getting confused now. You passed in array this a double r r as an argument inside that function. Is it the same yeah. um, argument that you are doing the for each own? This is what, or the what name of the array itself. So. You know the function now, like this function that we had before, right? We are passing in the array. Yes. This array that we have, we are passing yes. in here, right? Yes. Then we are calling a for yes. loop on that same array, right? Okay. Then the okay. same applies to this one. So I'm passing in that array as, a, as an argument to this function, right? Right. Okay, that same array. Okay. So that same that same array will come here, right? So it's that same okay. array that comes here that I'm using in this function. I just called it directly here. Okay. So this array is this array that we have here. So this one is equal to this one. So I'm calling the for each okay. on each array that I get, right? I know we have to pass okay. in the a callback function so in that callback function i'm just putting this as an argument there do you get okay okay then i created another array called this for each you see it's a different each it is capital e and capital ch so i created an ah. an array called this for each i create you is here this is the array where is the array you see this is the empty array here i created an array called for each let me just name it something else so let please, me call it loops now. Please name is something let else. <laughs> let me call it loops so that it won't, it won't look very funny. So I, I'm calling it loops now. And I'm pushing whatever value here after checking after checking this. I'm pushing whatever I have into into loops. So if I console the log loops now, I would have bolu oya and peace like we had initially. Should get. So it's very very simple I, because i don't want to hold us because of the uh, of the class but i'll probably make corrections to it i can make a recording and send it to the group if that's fine so you guys can see it i'll make a correction of the whole video of the whole uh class quiz you get yeah please scroll up okay which part here oh oh i want to see the that argument and uh, the is it you change this from string gary Okay, okay, you added no, no, no. Uh, loops. This one, this empty loops are really like this. this Why did you add it though? I just changed this, loop, what, this uh, was what was there before. This was what was there before for each. So, because I don't want it to be confusing, but my message was confusing. That's why I just changed but the name. Why did you even put that one? Like, I'm now confused. Like, why did you have to make another empty oh. string? Um, Ari, I mean. Yeah, it's, it was because the examples that I made, this example that I made, I wanted it, I wanted us to push it to a separate array rather than the array that we had before, oh. right? So I now created an array called for each. Okay, okay. I thought you right. pushed it into ARR and then for each as well. 
No, 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 no. I created oh, yes. a, a new array called before each array. So Fatima, the she complained. Yeah, exactly. Fatima okay, okay, okay. I guess it's it not confusing. Okay. So Fatima complained that it was confusing. That's why I changed it to loops. So I just changed the name of the, the this array. So nothing really changed. So hopefully, guys, I can release you guys now so that you'll be able to attend the the um so so please we want to see the new one you did. Let's get a screenshot. Okay. Let's get the screen grab. This is it here. So I'm going to make a video and explain everything that I did here so that you understand. Hopefully that's fine. So if you have any questions after I drop the video, you can ask me in my DM. Did we all get that? Yeah. Okay. Because my my yeah, B website gets to that. Awesome. that okay. So I guess you guys can go now because of the, the class. It starts by 12.30. So I'm I appreciate it if you guys were You just did for only one. Yes, I did for only one. That's why I said I would release the rest to the group. Like I'll, I will make oh. a, a short video. Sure you get. Yeah. All right. So if you have any questions when I make that video and you don't understand probably the concept, you can always ask me. Yeah. Class Sorry, what? Is there another class after this? Because you said you should go to for a class or something. Yeah, yeah, it's, level, it's by eleven thirty. It's by eleven thirty. I think the link was dropped in the group, so you just have yeah. to join with that. Yes, you have to join with that. Yeah, there's a DPD general session link dropped oh. by Motra. So you just have to join that. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you guys for today. Um, Charity, I'll be reviewing your code and I'll, I'll reply you.